In this world, everything is connected and one cannot exist without the other. In this world, everyone has a role to fulfill. Organisms and non-living things affect each other and are part of one working system. No matter how small, no matter how big, every moving part is connected with each other. The larger objective of studying ecosystems or in term ecology is to understand the nature of influences and relationships between organisms, between populations, communities, every non-living thing, and ultimately at the level of the biosphere. Welcome to Earth and Life Science Rewind, the Principles of Ecosystems. Greetings, senior high school students. I am Teacher Gian, and welcome to Earth and Life Science Rewind with your reviewers for Earth and Life Science. We will study the principles of ecosystems from its components, processes, how energy is transformed, and the relationships within them. An ecosystem is a system consisting of living things and non-living things, interacting with each other, affecting each other, and function together as a unit. To understand ecosystems, we need to understand first its principles, everything that is working within it. First, biological organization of end structure, ecological components, interactions within ecosystems, ecological processes, and how energy is transformed. Biological organizations within an ecosystem is how complexity is arranged inside an ecosystem. It starts first with species. Species are the smallest part of the ecological hierarchy, organisms that are able to reproduce with each other. So, a male and female that can reproduce is called a species. Populations are organisms of the same species living in the same place at the same time. You can say that the population of rabbits within the Philippines is a population, alright? The entirety of the rabbits in this country is population. Community is all the different populations interacting in the same place at the same time. You can say that plants and animals interact with each other in a process called herbivory. Animals eat plant products. Other fishes compete with each other inside a community. And when you add up the non-living components, it's called an ecosystem. So ecosystem are organisms and non-living things working together. Rainforests, seas, and deserts are examples of ecosystems. And when you combine all the ecosystems, you get the biosphere, which is all organisms and non-living matter inside our world. How about the components of an ecosystem? There are two types, abiotic factors, which are the non-living components. Things like temperature, light, water, minerals, gases, and energy itself are part of the ecosystem. Biotic factors, which are related to living things and their activities, are directly part of the biotic factors. Things like organisms, their interactions, reproduction, pathogens, microorganisms, they are all part of it. Interaction among organisms within or between their niches or roles are summarized into five types. First is competition. It's when organisms fight for the same resources. Food, territory, sunlight, or the female mate. Predation is when a consumer feeds on another consumer. Carnivores and omnivores are part of this ecological interaction. Commensalism is a relationship in which one organism benefits, one is neither helped or harm. Plants taking spaces on trees, fishes sticking on other bigger fishes for protection, are examples of commensalism. Parasitism is a relationship in which one organism benefits and the other organism is harmed but not always killed. Parasites like worms, insects, and invasive organisms are part of this parasitism. Mutualism is a relationship in which both species benefit. Plants benefit from ants and ants benefit from plants by transporting its resources. And plants give ants territory and places to live. Bacteria in our gut and our digestive system help us in digesting and absorbing nutrients. But we are also feeding them in a way. And lichens that have fungi help each other in a nutritional sense. When it comes to ecological processes, matter is always recycled in ecosystems. Though it may move from one ecosystem to another, it never goes away from the biosphere. The same atoms are used over and over again, used into different chemical forms, and incorporated into the organisms. These diagrams show the recycling of matter in the ecological process. Water cycle, carbon dioxide from carbon cycle, nitrogen cycle, phosphorus cycle, and the oxygen cycle are examples of ecological processes that cycle materials and matter itself. But unlike matter, Energy cannot be recycled in ecosystems. Ecosystems have direct, have a straight flow of energy in itself. 
it's a one-way street generally from light of the sun to heat released by the organisms. This is better portrayed by food chains and food web. First off, autotrophs create their own source of nutrition and absorb energy from the sunlight. And then, they are consumed by the heterotrophs, who cannot create those substances, who cannot make their own energy, therefore getting them from other sources. Aside from food chains and food webs, an energy pyramid is a graphical representation designed to show how energy is directed from the energy of the sun being absorbed by the producers going to the last of the consumers. So a quick application, is Metro Manila an ecosystem? Yes, it is, because it has abiotic components like the cement, the wind, acid rain, water, high humidity, and sunlight. And it also has biotic components. It has organisms like the dogs that you take care of, the cats, pests, other insects, rats. But the question is, is it a sustainable ecosystem? It can only be sustainable when it is reflected but by its biodiversity or the richness of its components. Conserving and maintaining biodiversity and ecosystems outside Metro Manila, outside the urban places, is critical for human survival. Healthy ecosystems clean our water, they purify our air, maintain our soil, regulate the climate, recycle nutrients. They take care of us. Nature and ecosystems take care of us. So we are stewards who need to conserve and maintain our environment, our ecosystems. So to wrap up our video reviewer, here are again the principles of ecosystems. Biological organizations and structure. Ecological components like biotic and abiotic components. Ecological interactions. Predation, competition, parasitism, commensalism, and mutualism. Ecological processes like the biogeochemical cycles and the transformation of energy. Let's test your knowledge. Please pause this video and try to answer this short quiz. After 5 seconds, the answers will be revealed and you can check your answers here. With your assumes in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Here are the answers in the test your knowledge portion. Thank you for watching this video reviewer for the principles of ecosystems. This is again Teacher Gian and see you next time on the next Earth and Life Science Rewind with your reviewers for Earth and Life Science. Study smart.